So after much will it or won't it, we officially will be having a May update this month, which does detail a lot of stuff that will be coming. Primarily bug fixes, a ton of buffs, but noticeably a lack of cataclysm details. But we'll be getting into that in just a moment. But before we do that, what's going on all of you fantastic freelancers? My name is William, and in today's video, we finally have the May update patch note details, and there's a lot to go over, so let's not waste any time, let's get into it. First and foremost, we have free play, and these are some pretty nice quality of life improvements. Specifically, there is an improvement to the compass to show collectible items as a question mark when you are near one. So if you're near collectible, it'll show up as a big question mark and you'll be able to see it fairly obviously. Now this is something that I would never thought they would include, but I am beyond ecstatic that they did. Now there is a purple target icon to show an area where an enemy that is guaranteed to drop loot will appear. So now there's no more wandering around free play wondering if an enemy will possibly drop loot. That purple triangle will show you the area in which an enemy will definitely be dropping loot. And when the enemy appears, they will have a white target icon over their head. So here's the scenario, you've got a scar encampment, and there's a rift that opens up. Well, the purple icon will appear, showing that, hey, an enemy will eventually spawn. That enemy spawns, let's say it's an enforcer, it'll have a white triangle over its head, kill it, and you will get guaranteed loot. And now you will have the ability to fast travel to different Strider locations from the map while in free play. Now, I would say these are some knockout quality of life improvements for free play, but there's more to it than that. They have added some new legendary missions, specifically the three Emerald Abyss legendary missions, and now the load screens will display lore entries regarding that location that you are loading into, which I think it's a nice little touch. There is also now a simple UI for players to communicate non-verbally with one another to express themselves via emotes or callouts. Think kind of like Apex Legends ping marker system without the pings. This is accessed by pressing down on the D-pad if you're using a controller, or B if you are on a keyboard on the PC. There have also been some improvements to creatures, specifically the Dominion Storm and Frost Brutes no longer have shields. That's kind of a significant change, and I don't know if that equates to the Brutes getting more health, or they're just going to be easier to kill, because I'll admit the shields inside the Sunken were not fun to deal with, but that made them a significant challenge. All Storm Javelins, Elementalist Valkyries, and so on and so forth will regenerate their shields like other shielded creatures. When hovering, they can be grounded with force or with fire status effects. So kind of like the Scar Hunter, you can ground them even with their shields up. Oh, and by the way, the Scar Hunter can now be grounded with the fire status effects. Previously, you could only do it by knocking them down or using frost or electricity. There's now an improved animation as well for the Scar Grenadiers, so when they throw their grenades, it's more clear that they're actually throwing a grenade. Another nice little quality of life improvement, whenever you're interacting with a point, if you look away, it's not going to cancel that point. You can keep on holding down, say, the F key on keyboard to interact, and if you look away or look over your shoulder, it's not going to cancel the interaction. Now, there have been some pretty significant changes and buffs for all of the Javelins. Specifically, the Interceptor with its base damage of its cluster mine going up from 110 to 135. Searching Glaive has now been increased from 550 to 605. The base damage for Plasma Star has almost doubled from 110 to 210. Now, the Colossus has some lesser buffs, but they're buffs nonetheless. The Burst Mortar has gone from 300 to 400. The Flak Cannon has gone from 42 to 60. The base damage of Black Powder has gone from 52.5 to 75. Now, Ranger Mains rejoice. There has been an increase to the Blast Missile. It's gone from 220 to 310. And the base damage of Argos's Mace, which I still think it needs a little bit more love than that, it's gone from 275 to 387. And lastly, for the Storm, the Flame Burst has gone from 150 to 260, the Venomous Blaze has gone from 225 to 390, and Arc Burst base damage has gone from 300 to 375. Buffs are buffs, and I would say the Ranger and Interceptor had some of the best buffs on this list. And of course, there was a metric ton of bug fixes that were made. I'm not going to read through them all. I will leave a link in the description with the patch notes official details if you want to read through those. But those were the really big things from the May update. Now, you all 
might be asking, where are the Cataclysms? We were promised the Cataclysms, and personally I was still holding out hope that they would be coming with the May update. Well, Jesse Anderson over at EA Answers HQ gave us a response as to what's going on with the Cataclysms. He starts off by saying, Hey everyone, it's been a little while. I'm excited to finally share some of what the team has been working hard on. This morning we are releasing update 1.2.0, and this update contains some under the hood content that you won't see right away, but setting things up for the future update, the Cataclysm. Speaking of the Cataclysm, you're probably wondering when it's going to release. Rather than rush it out the door, we want to take time to get feedback from you and make changes based on what we hear. In order to do that, we are releasing a public test server, a PTS, on PC, which will allow you to see the content as it's being developed and gives you the ability to provide feedback. While this won't immediately solve all of the current issues, we want to continue to hear from you as we make improvements to Anthem, and the PTS is a great way to do that. We'll dive deeper into these topics and others, as well as giving a first-hand look at the Cataclysms tomorrow on the live stream at 3 p.m. Central Time over at Twitch or Mixer. We do hope you'll join us as we take this step towards a better anthem. Sincerely, Jesse. So, what are my thoughts on the Cataclysms potentially being postponed? Well, once again, I'm not particularly thrilled. The roadmap was delayed again, and probably with Chapter 2, there's going to be some significant changes to how they do the roadmap in general. How that's going to look, I guess we will see in June, but there is a bright side to all of this. Instead of releasing the Cataclysms willy-nilly and possibly with issues or without player feedback or playtesting, they are going to be making the PTS for PC players to enjoy it, experience it, and give feedback on what they think about it. This will give them the opportunity to make improvements, which I think is pretty awesome. For you PC players, I will be doing a video very shortly on how to download the public test server and how to get signed up for all of that. Keep in mind though, your feedback is really, really important. So don't just play it to play it early. Play it to give feedback and give good conscious feedback. But with that, that is just about all I have for today's video. The May update, while small, it did bring some quality of life improvements, but nothing really from the big roadmap. What do you think about the May update? What do you think about Jesse's response to the Cataclysms? Let me know in the comment section below as I really do read through all of your comments and I of course will respond if there's conversational potential and, you know, when I'm available. And if you enjoyed the content we produce on your game Anthem, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. And of course, as always, a very special thank you to my channel members and patrons for all their generous donations to your Anthem. They go a long way to helping me maintain and enhance the quality of the content on this channel, and I cannot tell you all how much it means to me, especially with Anthem being in its current state. I haven't been able to update the Patreon list quite yet, but I will do that this evening before tomorrow's video. As always, I hope all of you fantastic freelancers have a phenomenal day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next video very soon. And remember, freelancers, we are strong alone, but we are stronger together.